Very interesting. We do have breaking news. Just about an hour ago, at least part of a 17-month-long massive world mystery has been solved. It has now been confirmed. Those battered, barnacle-encrusted pieces of plane wreckage that just washed up on that island in the French Indian Ocean are part, indeed, of Malaysian Flight 370, which disappeared off radar screens 17 months ago. Now, those pieces you're looking at on the screen are indeed from the mystery plane that was en route from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing with 239 passengers and crew on board. Now the question is, do any of those pieces show what might have happened to cause that plane to disappear so long ago? On the phone, we have Rob Mark. He's a commercial pilot and the publisher of JetWine.com. I know you've been watching all of these details, Rob. Do you have an answer to that question? Can we, can we interpret from anything on those pieces what might have happened? Well, I, I still think, believe it or not, even though we know that it's from MH370, uh, from what we've seen, it's going to be a little difficult to tell because... Uh, it, it looks like there's no damage to the front end, which is what we call the leading edge, and there is damage to the back end, which means that probably happened when it hit the water. But I think the conclusion that we can start to draw is that that triple seven did go down in the water, and and you know that's probably going to start to give the uh, family some unfortunate, but some probably uh, welcome uh, in another way uh, closure on this whole thing because. Uh, you know, that means the rest of the other pieces are either at the bottom of the ocean or, uh, you know, floating somewhere else in the Indian Ocean. Rob, what was your theory before these pieces were found? Every pilot in America and around the world was part of a very unhappy guessing game at the time. Well, everybody has that same question. And mm. the, the, the problem that those of us in the, in the industry we're working with is that we all had, you know, there were so many different theories and, and you could carry them out one or two strings into the conversation. And then you'd say, but you know what, that didn't work because of this. Or if that was the case, then where is this part? Or then why didn't they do that? And there are just so many things that don't make sense. And I think it's because we're assuming it was one situation that occurred. We may find, if we ever find the black boxes, which I'm very doubtful that we ever will, uh, we may find that, you know, the crew did indeed take control of the airplane for some reason and that something else went wrong along the way that caused them to go down into the water eventually. I, I mean, we're, we're looking for the simplest answer, and it just may not be there right now. Exactly. You always look for the simplest answer. But when you look at the flight path it was supposed to take from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing, it completely veered left. It completely veered west and ended up somehow in the ocean and floated eventually up on Réunion Island, which, by the way, is a French island in the French Indian Ocean. It's near Madagascar, a uh, com complete opposite direction of where it was supposed to be going. So that becomes weird and suspicious. Uh, it's such a gigantic expanse, Rob, of ocean to search for something that could be as small as a black box. You have oh, no absolutely. help with that. Absolutely. And of course, the black boxes are heavy. They, they sank to the bottom of the ocean, most likely because they were still attached to the airframe. Uh, this piece that, that was floating uh, was much lighter. Uh, and so we may indeed find other pieces over the course of the, the next few months that the, on the, you know, on the uh, eastern shore of other islands. Uh, but, you know, are we ever going to find the fuselage? Again, very, very doubtful. It, it's a, not even a needle in a haystack because we don't even know where the haystack is right now. Oh, that's an excellent point. And, and it was ever thus in a way. We've got George Hamlin joining the conversation. He's transportation consulting president. And George, when you heard that these pieces were indeed from the mystery flight that had disappeared 17 months ago, what was your first thought? Well, I'll echo the uh, comment previously about closure. This is, this is something that the families involved take you know, a very modest amount of comfort in that we, we, we are now pretty sure that the airplane went down in the ocean and a piece of it has been found. Uh, the barnacles on it, um, you know, in the last hour, we had had experts saying that you could actually test those barnacles and figure out it takes a long time for those little suckers to, to, you know, attach. You can see what look to be polka dots, brown polka dots. It's probably where the barnacles were. It takes a long time for them to attach and, and cause that kind of corrosion. You could actually find out which part of the ocean they're from. And would that give us any more uh, help in solving the mystery, George? Well, that, you know, these parts apparently have drifted uh, uh, 
a fair distance in the sea, that may help us locate you know, where the airplane is down. Um, is that going to enable us you know, definitively to find it? I, I don't know, and I, at this point, tend to doubt it also. Mm-hmm. But any information that can be gleaned from this is a lot better than we had 24 hours ago. Yeah, and, and Rob, the fuselage, that's not the gigantic piece that has, has floated back up. And that's what people begin to wonder where are the people who were on board? Some of their luggage also floated up, but it, it makes you wonder, just for more of the real closure, when or whether we will ever find them. I, I, again, Rob, I, 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 oh, go ahead, George. My impression based on uh, shipwrecks, et cetera, is that human remains don't last that long in the water intact. Yeah. You know, that sounds like a heart's conclusion, but I think that's reality. Rob? Uh, again, I, I would say the same thing, and, and I think that after 18 months, we, we, have to, we have to believe, especially having found this piece in the water, that these people are gone. It, it's not the, the word anybody wants to hear, but it's not the first time we've lost an airplane in the water. And as George says, the, the, the remains just don't remain intact. Uh, but again, I, I still believe that unless we find those black boxes, it's going to be speculative until the end of time. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that uh, you have family members who are saying this does not bring so-called closure. It's a somewhat of an overused word, but it's the best word at this moment because they want to know what happened. They want to know if there was something nefarious or evil that brought this plane down or whether it was technical, uh, and we will wait to see. Uh, George, do you want to get one last comment in here? I think the other thing, uh, was, you know, previous comment about you know, the, the crew diverting the airplane someplace, I think it's likely that a person did, but I don't think we can definitively say it was one of the two pilots at this point. We will wait to see. And again, without the black box, we don't have that. Rob Mark, George Hamlin, thank you for getting on the phone with us. But once again, the Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak has confirmed those pieces that floated up on that French Indian Ocean island of Réunion do indeed come from that flight.